Before we get into the video, if you're looking for top quality sample packs, preset packs and templates for your music production, they're entirely royalty free. You can use them in your own productions and learn from them. If you're interested, check out the link in the description and enjoy the video. What's good people? It's Lozo B. Bryce and I am back with a brand new video. Today we're going to be working on part six of my W, &W from start to finish track. In this episode, we're going to be finishing the and continuing the super sore break that we started last episode. We're going to be finalizing the break, adding some extra details, some ambience, some more effects, layering up some more super sores, or maybe transitioning into the build up. But other than that, that's what we're doing in this episode. I'm going to play what we have so far as a refresher to remind everyone where we're at so far, and then we'll get continuing on the break. So, yeah, this is what I have so far, and enjoy. Yeah, that's what we have so far. Uh, listening through, there's plenty of stuff I want to add. So we're gonna be starting off by adding a reverb towel off this drop synth here, and it'd be nice to transition. And then we're going to make a reverb reverse effect for this first note here to sweep into the pluck. And then, yeah, we're going to be adding some more effects, layering up the super swords, adding a bass line, some drums, and yeah, just layering up the break to make it sound more professional. So that's what we're doing, so let's go. So to start with, we're going to be soloing these three things here. We're going to be making a bounce off this last note, adding some reverb on it so it's got a massive long reverb towel. And then we're going to be rendering it and then we're going to do a nice pan effect. You'll see what I mean in a second. So we're gonna to go to the channel here. Doesn't really matter which one we put reverb on. Probably the more prominent one, which is probably this. So if we add a bunch of reverb on this one. And then we change the decay to about maybe eight to 10 seconds. We'll try eight. Might as well push it to 10, why not? And then what we do is we open up Edison, which is a FL Studio plugin, everyone should know this. You click the record button here and you play it. And then you can stop the recording, drag it, and it's now here. We normalize it, reverse it. I just realized I'm a dummy, this isn't the reverse thing we want. So we want to normalize it, but we don't want to reverse it. We're only going to reverse the reverse pluck here. For this one, it's just gonna be as it is. We still want to delete this part though, because we don't want this part here. It's not nice. We're going to change the transient mode to smooth, and this will go at the end here, which will be a nice reverb effect. It'd be nice if I turn off the reverb, incredibly overpowering. There we go, delete that. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we blend this nice. So we're going to create an automation clip here of the volume just to make this bit sweep in. Nothing too aggressive, like that. Perfect. And then like I said, we're going to make a pan automation as well. This will make it pan from left to right really fast. I'll show you how to do that in a second. To make some space for this reverb. There we go. And then we're gonna highlight this, same as before, double click, right click to pan, create automation clip. And then we want to make a point here, right click it, make sure it's a, want to make sure it's a wave mode under here. You right click the dot, you click wave, go to the center here and you drag down. We want to make it rapid at the start. And we obviously want to exaggerate the panning. You want to right click here, bring this down, pull it down to make it less aggressive. Like that, and again, we're gonna do that again here to make it less aggressive. And then to finally end it, we're going to make it like that. And then it will slowly come back up to 50%. And then 
There we go. And then added that on with the brake. Perfect. So that's good for now. If we need to edit that, we'll change that. But for now, we'll leave it as it is because I'm happy with that. Next, we're going to make a reverb reverse of this plug here. So again, it's very similar or it's identical to the previous one. We just want to have the first hit of this note here. So this one here. And we're going to mute these ones so we can make it a little longer. We want to turn off the delay because we don't want delay in it. So we're going to this, turn off the fruity delay. We're going to mute this reverb. We're going to add another one because, again, we're going to just only use it for the reverb bounce and then we're going to delete it. So for now, we're just going to put it on 50% mix and about a six second decay time. Perfect. Again, open Edison. We're going to make a new one. Hit record. Same as before, use this one here, click, drag, release. Remember to delete the reverb, otherwise you have the issue I had before, delete that. And then we can turn the reverb and the delay back on. Now this time you want to normalize it and reverse it. So before we just wanted to normalize it, this time we want to normalize and reverse. So now we have this, same as before, we don't really want this beginning part. It's not nice. We just want this part and we want to turn up the in knob because we want it to fade in a bit more like that. And then all we need to do now is get the volumes right. We don't want it, we don't want it too loud. We don't want it too quiet. We want it, we want it the exact same volume as this break effect. We want it to overlap just a tiny bit, maybe by one like that. I also want to change the de-clicking mode to generic. Add a, just a tiny reverb just to give it a nice extra towel to transition otherwise if it's not it's just an instant stop what a nice just extra towel to help with transition another thing i wanted to add is just another pluck layer just to do chords so instead of doing this top melody here I just want to copy these chords and add, make chords of it, chords out of it to add more harmonics. Draw them out here. This will only be used for this first eight bars, so that's why I got them just to be very subtle, just as a nice backup pluck, just to create a bit more harmonics in the layer. So we just want to duplicate that, add that there. We're going to call these chord plucks. Open up Silent for one, see what we have. So let's look through the hardware bank here, see what plucks he has in this bank. They're very good. One of them is really good. It's called Brassy. It's a very nice one. Could attempt this one if we turn off the delay and reverb and turn down the cutoff. Maybe turn off the white noise. Like that. And what we're going to do is go into a pattern, hold control, left click and drag, hit control C to copy this MIDI information. Go onto your other pattern, right click your other pluck, go onto piano roll, click control V to paste. What we're going to do is highlight them all, copy them by holding shift and clicking, and then we're going to go up seven, so count from here. Seven. What we're going to do is going to up, take some of the high frequencies out. We, have, we want them quite muffled. to do as well we're going to create another harmonics we're going to create the third harmonic so we want to 
highlight each chord. So we've got this one, this one, this one. We're going to go up three. This is G minor. We could put this up an octave like that. Sounds pretty good. Again, we're going to go to the F like that. We're going to go up four. This is F major. Put the A up an octave like that. This will be G again up an octave. Put this up to G again, like that. So now we have extra harmonics here. We have the D and the A sharp and vice versa and all the rest of the chords. Now if we just add this in, we just solo all these plucks and mute this one and then add it in. Just adds the extra body and the extra harmonics to the layer. Add some stereo imaging. So I guess for now, we should, let's just add a bit more ambience, maybe some reverse vocals, like every four bars. So maybe one here, one here. Just to add a bit more ambience. It's always nice, it fills up the track very nicely. Play this without all this stuff here. are very nice so if we add a bit more just fill it up a bit more and then we can move on to the super souls so of course it wouldn't be a, a tutorial if i didn't use cashmere every single time it's incredible i'm pretty sure he has some reverse vocals and synths yeah right here let's just go through some of these that one could work because it's an f this one could also work because they're both in f so it's perfect without a pitch all we need to do is we're going to add these both to the same mixer channel put a bunch of reverb on it Reverb your best friend. Just make sure you control it because it can get messy. Vintage Valhalla, my favorite reverb at the moment. And let's quickly solo these. Make sure you turn them down, they're going to be very loud. Yeah, so every four bars, this one will go here. This one will go here, right there. And again, copy this. This one will go there. Could put this one here, see what that sounds like. Let's up the reverb mix to 40. So I think what I'm going to do next is to add a, a couple more impacts and maybe some sweep downs to this bit here. Because all we have here is just a reverb towel right here and just an impact from Kashmir. So we can find a bit more impacts. That one could work. Maybe a tonal one if there's one in here. That'd be very nice if there's a tonal one. That's a blip. <laughs> that works because it has some more white noise. Perfect. And this, yeah, so we can use these, try and add these in. This boom is quite nice because it has a bit more impact, but also has some white noise built into it. Like this one here. Let's turn down the out knob, and then we have this one here. It's going to be pretty loud, so let's turn this down. So we can add these up here. 
actually helps a lot. All three of these actually complement each other very nice. Especially this one here. So we could add this impact again here. And yeah, as you can see, I've made a pattern for super saws. We're gonna start adding some more super saws now. So straight away, the first one I'm going to add is from Nexus. There's a very nice one from Nexus EDM5. It's called, let's see under here, it's called Synth Big Saw Chords. Just turn off the reverb. Copy these MIDI and we should be good. This is a very nice super saw plug. There's one from Silent for Like as well. So what I've done is I've made a pattern called super saws. We're going to stack a few super saw layers and we're going to right click, split by channel and it will split them all and we could add them all individually. So this is number one. That's number one. Number two is from Silent. And again, the hard roll bank is called Super Saws 1, I believe. Let's go to Hard Roll Bank. And it's called Super Saw 1, yeah. A very nice one. So as you see, in the first Super Saw, we have the bass layer and a harmonic. The second super saw we have the same bass layer, just an octave lower, and the same harmonic. And then the next one is going to be all three to fill up the whole mid frequency spectrum. We're gonna go silent for again just because it's not so intense on the CPU. Nexus and Spyro are quite CPU intensive when I'm recording, so I'll try to avoid them as much. So we'll stick with silent. So lead finder sounds pretty nice. Let's see what this sounds like. I'm gonna to delete this top melody for now. And we're just gonna make some chords out of this. If if we can, we'll just copy and paste these chords from the break into a super saw format. So what I've done there is I've soloed each one and muted one at a time just to see what impact it had. And that's perfect, that's what we want. Every time I muted one, it took something away. That is, that's exactly what we want. If you have a sound and it's not really complementing the track in any way, if you mute it and you can't really hear a difference, you may as well delete it because it's not making any changes. So if I do that again, just to demonstrate that again, I'm gonna play the super saws and I'm gonna go through each one, I'm gonna mute one at a time and you're, you're just gonna hear a drop off in volume or thickness or layering. Um, and that's a good sign, meaning it's doing something in the layer. So each time I deleted one or muted it, should I say, it just took something away, body, extra melody or whatever. It just made the sound sound 
less full and less fat. So that means each layer is complementing each other as good. So what I think I might do is I might add maybe one or two leads, uh, meaning it's, it's just playing the top melody and not the chorus, just to give it a bit more festival sound. Maybe that's what I'll do. Um, and after that, I'll start adding some drums and some claps, and then we can go on from there. So what I'm going to do is go into one of the layers in the pluck. Again, it's similar to what we've done before. We're just going to hold control, click and drag, but this time it's the melody. Click control C to copy, go into our super saw layer, go into a new piano roll, control V to paste. This is the melody just here. This is one lead one, so I'm going to call this lead one. So I think for another lead, what I have in mind is from Kashmir. You don't have to use Kashmir, but the, what the lead I have in mind is in a, a bunch of banks. It's an easy sound to make, but I remember it being in Kashmir, and it's a sound called ear bleed. Sounds like this. This will give it a bit more mono sound. So this now, now we can just can copy and paste it right here. So we could add this onto this bus here to see what that sounds like if we link these to the bus. So like I said, I've made it a bit more mono just to fill it up a bit more. Some of these sounds are panned. I'm going to pan some of these left and right, add a bit more stereo enhancement. But this one wants to be pretty centered just to make the, the main melody full stereo mono just to make the whole stereo field more filled up with the melody this one's going to be a bit more wider So I'm going to add one more layer here. If I remember rightly, in the hard roll bank, there's a lead called W and W right there. Perfect. So we're going to add this just to see what it sounds like. There's a sound called W and W. I'm going to try and see and try and add it in because we are making a W and W from start to finish. So we're going to add this lead in here. I heard some reverb and delay in the plugin, so we're going to turn that off. So it's sounding pretty good. So I think to end off this episode, I'll just add some small drum elements in the break here. I'm thinking of adding a very subtle clap throughout the whole 16 bars here, and then maybe uh, some more claps and when the super saws come in, and then that will transition into the build up for the second drop. But that'll be next episode. I'm thinking of as we've got a first drop here, goes down into the break, goes into the build up, and then goes into a second drop. So essentially a whole track minus the intro and outro. 
And obviously, of course, at the end of the whole tutorial, I'll be giving the FLP out for free as usual. But yeah, add some drums here to end off the episode, and then we go from there. So uh, the claps, again, cashmere is probably the best bet. So we can use these crowd claps here. These are always nice to use in tracks like this. These are very nice. Let's turn them down a lot. They're very loud. And these can be in the super saw bit here. We'll add them in there. Turn them down. And then for these four bars here, I want a more forefront clap, a more aggressive one. Revealed recordings, drums, volume five, claps. Let's see what we've got here. Interesting claps. Let's try another volume three. This one could work. Let's put this here. So this one's a more reverb airy type clap. And then this one's a more forefront. Also wanted to add in some snares here, right here, similar to um, rave culture. And it's like a big bass snare. And I want to add that in for the super saw bit. So we want to look for a big snare, preferably one with a sweep as well, or we could just find one with a sweep and then uh, chop the sweep out. So maybe if we use this one, just take the sweep out of it. That's what we want. So just that bit there. So we just have this bit here. And that can go there. And then we want a big snare. We could use the basic one that everyone uses. Why not use a Prider snare? Layer it with another snare as well. Similar to that, it's very similar to rave culture. They do this in rave culture as well. Um, it just helps to transition. It's always nice. And I think if we find that big snare as well, that one right there, do that. Make sure you turn the declicking mode to generic so it smooths out. Same as the Prada snare, do the same with that. Turn this down. Turn the trim up. If you don't do that, if you see here, it's not on the beat. So if you do that, perfect. I think what we might do as well is add the snare from the drop and then we could um, find this one as well. As usual, like I said, right click, split by channel. This splits all the patterns into their own separate ones so we can now have more control over this. And obviously this is indeed one, two and three. Anything we really need to add is a baseline. We could either use like a Reese bass, a sub bass, or any other bass you want. As long as it's some sort of sign bass, perfectly fine. Usually you want it to be sustained. It doesn't always need to be sustained. It could be um, in the same rhythm as the lead. But for now, we'll just add a sustained one just because it's easier. And we can go back later and polish it in a later date. So we'll call this sub bass. We're going to be using just a simple sine wave bass for now. Nothing too crazy. We're going to be, be using this one here. Nothing too crazy, just some sustained bass notes. We're going to call this sub. What we do need to do, I'll show you a couple shortcut keys. So we're going to copy the bass notes here. So if you hold control and shift, you can select individual notes like that. So we're going to do this, select all these MIDI notes, control C to copy them. Go over to our sub bass layer here, go to the piano roll and click control V like that. Then we want to delete each note, but leave one at the start. So leave one at each beginning like that. And then delete these end ones here. And again, do the same for each one. And then once you've done that, you click Control L and it will make all the, the notes long. All you've got to do is adjust the last one here and then you are good to go. So yeah, that is it so far. And like I said, next episode we'll transition into the build-up. If we need to add any more into this, we will. This isn't the final product by any means. 
this is just a basic idea this is basic enough for us to move forward into the next part of the track otherwise we'll, we'll get stuck by working on the track for too long so yeah next episode we we'll work on the build up and helping with transition from the break to the build up and, and then maybe we'll uh, make a different drop we'll maybe we'll, we'll use the main this part here So this main section here we'll use but maybe we'll change up the first part here um, but we'll, we'll see what happens in the second drop when we get to it so that is pretty much it so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did smash the like button helps the channel grow and i really appreciate it next video will, will be on wednesday it will probably be part eight of my WW from start to finish working on the build up like i just mentioned i want to finish this series as quick as i can so i can give the slp out for you lot for free you can learn from it stuff like that so i want to try and get it out as quick as i can but yeah hope you enjoyed the video stay safe produce music and i'll speak to you all very very soon